Thank you, Bismillah. What an interesting sitting this is today. I've been fascinated by so many different views, so many misconceptions about our religion, so many good comments made. Firstly, I would like to share something with you, ladies and gentlemen, that in order to determine whether a system or an ideology or a way of life is worthy of our attention today in the 21st century or not, we must go back to the history. We must go back into our history and see which system did actually work. We have so many things we can propose. We had the communists opposing communism, we had the fascists with their ideology, we have the democrats, we have the liberal democrats, we have the Christians, we have the Muslims, we have the Jews, we have so many things which happened to mankind. Which one worked? This is the question. If you apply a job, apply for a job today, the first thing the employer will ask for is your criminal record. Do you have a record? Have you ever committed any crimes in the past? If you have, then you are very likely not to get the uh, not to get the job. So we do the same today. We look at the records of all of these ideologies and see which one actually worked. When we look at the record of Islam, and this is not what I say. I'm talking about academics, historians. They will tell you what happened to the Christians and the Jews when they were living with the Muslims. And someone raised the point of having debates, open discussion. In Islam, it wouldn't be possible. Well, I invite you to go and write, uh, read the works of Sidney H. Griffith, who is a historian, writing how the Muslims treated the Christians, how the Christians were living under the Muslims. And he states in his works, and there's a book titled The Church Under the Mosque. In this book he states that the Christians were allowed to criticize the religion of Islam while living under Islam. And there were open debates taking place. He also writes that a 9th century traveler went to Baghdad and he was baffled. He was shocked by what he saw in Baghdad at the time. He saw a gathering of Jews, Christians, Zoroastrians, atheists, Muslims, all kind of people debating each other about the existence of God and about the, the ultimate reality. And he was shocked. This was done by Islam. Prophet Muhammad himself had a debate with the Christians in the mosque. And when the Christians said, we don't believe in you, did he massacre them? No. He told them to go and live in your land as you please and you will not be molested, you will not be touched, you will not be hindered in any way. The Christian history testifies to that. The Jewish history testifies to that. Go to Jewish scholars, Jewish historians such as Heinrich Greitz, Amnon Cohen, and uh, what's his name, uh, Zion Zohar, and Philip D. Bell. All of these people are Jewish historians who wrote that the golden age of the house of Israel was when they were living with the Muslims in Egypt, in Damascus, and in Spain, in Cordoba. Some of the biggest scholars Jews produced were born in Cordoba. Maimonides, Musa bin Maimun in Arabic, was born in Cordoba. He wrote his works in Arabic language. The Hebrew grammar was formed in Cordoba. And that was the golden age. Jews are telling you that today. So we have to go and see the history, how history tells us the Muslims treated the Jews. If the Muslims are against the Jews, then our history tells us otherwise. Ibn Ishaq you mentioned and how the Prophet treated the Jews. You only mention one case whereby the Jews were about to annihilate the Muslims. Did you even study the reasons why they were treated in that way? They were punished for a crime. There was a law in Medina which they broke and they were punished. There were other Jewish tribes, more than 10 Jewish tribes in Medina. Were they punished in that way? No. They were allowed to live and on top of that in the time of Omar, they were rehoused in Palestine. They had a dream to live in Palestine. The Christians didn't allow them to live in Palestine. The Jews were rehoused. They were moved to Palestine by Umar bin Qattab, all of their tribes. Were they all massacred? No. So we have to read things in context. Unbelievers are enemies. You quoted a verse in the Quran which is talking about the war situation. We can get married to Christians and Jews. How can you marry your enemy? How can you get married to your enemy? If, you, if they are to be your enemy, how can you get married to them? 93% of scientists are atheists. For what? 100% of scientists in the past in the Middle Ages were theists, Christians and Muslims. Muslim, Islam, let me finish and then we can talk later. Islam, Islam brought science to the West. George Saliba from the University of Columbia wrote a book, 
And her book is titled Islamic Origins of the European Renaissance. Read the book and you see how Islam liberated and intellectually stimulated the Europeans for them to get civilized because the Europeans were witnessing the dark ages at the time. Very quickly, let me answer one more question. Open discussion, I've already answered that. Iran, keep, people keep mentioning Iran. I'm not a spokesman for Iran. I don't even agree with them. Doctrinally, I don't agree with Iran. But what has Iran done? That's the question. What has Iran done? Why don't you talk about America? Americans have killed over 3 million people in the last 20 years. How many millions of Iranians killed? This is the question. What has Iran done globally? What has Saudi Arabia done globally? Go and see what the Americans have done. You talk about Americans bombing the Serbs in the 90s. At the same time, the Americans were killing Iraqis due to embargo and sanctions. 1.7 million Iraqi, Iraqis were killed during those sanctions and half a million of them were children because of lack of medicine. So why don't we talk about America? Iran, Iran, Iran. What has Iran done? This is the point. What has Saudi Arabia done? No crimes. No crimes. Nothing like the Americans and the British and the other European governments and France uh, included. What kind of Islamic state am I looking for? I'm looking for the state you mentioned yourself, the state of Omar, the state of Spain, Cordoba, and the state of Saudi Arabia. That's the states we are looking for. I hope that answers your question. More porn, less rape. Sorry, I'm going to finish right now. More porn, porn, more porn, less rape. It's like saying more guns, less killing. That's my answer to that. <laughs> Two billion saying no to 9-11, but you don't hear them. Two billion Muslims are saying 9-11 was wrong. If the Muslims did. But you want to listen to those bombers, those people who flew those planes into the buildings. If they did, I don't know whether they did, because they don't exist anymore. If they did, you want to listen to them, but you don't, want, you don't pay any attention to two billion Muslims who are condemning it. Thank you very much for listening.